Hey, what's up, guys? It's Michael uh, against Gorilla here. Um, so basically, this is to teach you. Uh, I believe it's pronounced Sabak. I think this is the Carillion Spike ver variation variant. Uh, please don't kill me if I'm wrong. Anyway, this is the game uh, Hasbro or whatever Disney came out with. Um, this is the one seen in Solo, Star Wars Story, um, whatever the name was. Uh, it's called the Han Solo card game. Uh, Han Solo. Uh, because they, I guess Sabak was um, trademarked or whatever by another company and they can't use it. So anyway, uh, I think they're fighting the battle, but they're losing, I read, which is uh, kind of funny. So anyway, the goal of the game is you have cards that have greens are positives, reds, uh, let's see that. Uh, oh darn it. I have these organized, so I better get them, and reds are negatives. And you want to get them closest to zero. And then, so there's 62 cards total. You have one through ten three times, negative one through negative ten three times, and then two zeros. So that's basically um, how the game works. And it's kind of like five card stud because you get your dealt two cards face down, like in Texas Hold'em, or five card stud. And then you draw three more, or you know, you turn around three more, or you can pick up from the pile. Oh, and you can also discard cards. Um, to get the best hand. So it's kind of like five card stud, but you don't show the extra three cards. So anyway, uh, let's get right into this. All right guys, continuing on. So this is gonna be talking about equity and whether and how much chance you have when you draw. And uh, just to give you an idea of whether you should draw or not, um, this is especially effective later on, on like the fourth and fifth turn when you have to decide whether or not to stand um, to if you think you have a chance of improving your hand or if you decide to stand on the earlier ones and wait for more cards to come down in the uh, discard or draw pile, whatever, the face up pile um, to see uh, and kind of gauge how much chance you have. So anyway, we're going to play with three players. So positive five, positive four, negative two, negative two, negative one, and positive six. And this card is negative three. Okay. So, um, anyway, this is positive 5 and negative 2. Okay, cool. So they have, uh, right now, positive 3. So they're going to take this card and give them 0. So pretty good for them, right? Okay, so now this card comes down, and it's a negative 4. So this person's going to say, all right, cool, well, I'm going to take that. Um, sounds good to me. Uh, this gives me negative 1. So now this card comes down. And it's positive 6. This person has negative 2 and positive 6. Taking the positive 6 would give them 10, which, uh, because positive 6 plus positive 6 minus 2 is 10. So that doesn't make much sense for them to take it. So now they have to decide, uh, I'm obviously going to draw or I could stand. Um, they're probably going to draw because they have three more cards to turn, take, including this one. And so we're going to determine out what are the chances of them getting a hand that decides to get them to negative 1, 0, or 1. Okay, so they have negative 2 and positive 6, so that's 4. So a negative 3 gets them to 1, a negative 4 gets them to 0, and a negative 5 gets them to negative 1. So that's three cards that get them to negative 1, 0, or 1. Okay, great. So now you have, in the deck, you have 62 cards total. You have 1 through 10 three times, negative 1 through 10 three times, and then two zeros. So we know that there are nine cards, because three times three, that can help them. Now there's 62 cards in the deck, and however, this is where it comes in. So we know the negative four was taken, and also the negative three was taken. So the negative four gives them zero, and the negative three gives them one, positive one. So you have to take those out of account when you're deciding your equity, because you can't double count them. So you have, instead of having nine outs, three times three, you have to take away two of them because you know they're already taken and they're not in the deck. So that means you only have seven outs. So now we have seven outs, and what are we gonna divide it by? Well, we have to divide the total number of unknown cards by the number of known cards. So you have two known cards here, one known card here for three, and then also you have the two known cards that were picked up. So now, two plus one plus two is five. <laughs> yeah, so you have five known cards. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. 
<laughs> so now you have five known cards, and there's 62 cards in the deck. So 62 minus 5 is 57. So now we're going to divide seven cards, because it was the 9 three, two, times 3 minus 2. So we're going to divide 7, divide by 57. And that means we only have uh, 0.1228. So we have 12.3% chance of improving our hand to negative 1, 0, or 1. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how small the chances are. Normally you could say, oh, I have so many options. and Well, actually, no, you, you really don't. You have like a, like a, you know, you have like a 1 in 9, in like a guessing the number 1 through 8 and getting it right. Okay, so that just kind of gives you an idea. So instead of guessing um, around, you know what you're doing. And this will be especially helpful later on, on like the fourth turn and fifth turn, when you have to decide whether or not to make a play um, and whether or not to risk it going in to try and get a negative one if you have a negative two or something like that. Uh, it's, so it's like five card stud when someone folds, you have to remember what cards they had. I don't know if you play poker, but that's kind of what it's like. So anyway, this person's going to draw because it's their only hope, really. Um, and they actually get a negative four, which is going to give them negative two, positive six, negative four, and gives them a zero. So they actually had uh, around, uh, what was it, 12% chance or whatever of getting this right. And, or getting a negative one, zero, or one, and they got a zero, which is great. So um, this person has zero, this person has uh, negative one, and this person has zero. So anyway, that's pretty much the equity part. Cool guys, so this one, uh, it's not as helpful, but it's still kind of helpful. This is uh, deductive reasoning to try and figure out what hand they have, and just to give you an idea of how far you are ahead or behind, and uh, what kind of moves you need to make, and also potentially how you could block them, maybe, by picking up a card that helps you, but maybe doesn't help, that might help them. And so it's kind of key, but it just gives you an idea of what they have. So uh, let's make you all. Okay, so, um, Anyway, we're going to start off two players, minus 6, minus 10, positive 5, minus 10. Okay, so this person has uh, negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, negative 10 minus 10, negative 20. Okay, and this card comes down positive 8. So this person will stand, uh, and they're going to keep their negative 1. This person has negative 20, so they really need to make a move, and they're going to want to get a uh, positive 8 or higher to try and get them lower. Um, because having the positive 9 and positive 10 is pretty low, and I might get into the math of that, but, uh, well, actually it would be, uh, oh gosh, what would it be, 12 divided by 60 or whatever, so we'd have, like, a, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I don't even know if I'm right there. Um, 20% chance, maybe, I'm not sure. Never mind. Okay, so they're going to take the positive 8, and now they're down to negative 12. So the card's going to come down again, positive 10. So this person's going to stay at negative 1, and then they're going to take the positive 10, and now they're at negative 2. And then this card comes down, and let's say, uh, you know, he takes this or whatever, and then another card comes down, but oh, that's it. So um, anyways, this is, uh, this will just kind of help you give an idea, because uh, you know when they have when they take the first eight, they were definitely in the negatives by a large amount, which means they were probably pretty far from zero, which is going to make them more desperate to keep drawing, which could help them potentially, uh, which might mean potentially they're way far off from zero, because if you had a zero or higher, you wouldn't take the eight, because that would just bring you further away from zero, and chances are they don't have a negative one, and they wouldn't have a negative one, um, negative 2, negative 3, or negative, uh, yeah, they wouldn't have a negative 1, negative 2, or negative 3, because taking the 8 would just bring them further away. If you had a negative 4, it'd just go to 4, so it doesn't really matter. But then you know they don't have a negative 3 or higher, because negative 3 plus 8 would be 5, so it just wouldn't work. They, they wouldn't have that, so you know they're automatically, you're ahead, automatically starting. And that just kind of gives you peace of mind, and it lets you know, um, it's probably best just to hold on to that because they're probably not going to get a zero at this rate that they're going at. 
Um, so it gives you kind of a general idea of what they have. Um, and then also when they take the positive 10, you know that they were really behind. Um, and now it's possible they're close by. But then again, they're going to be more desperate the more cards they take. So if they're taking like the fifth card and fourth card, it means they're probably still, you know, at three or two. Possibly they'd be at two. But chances are they're three or four or five, and they're still desperate, and that you're most likely ahead. Uh, and that just kind of helps you out. And there's no betting involved, but um, if there were, that would help you out a lot. So there's that. Alright, so lastly, well, I think lastly, I might do one more. This is Bluffing and Sabak um, in the console card game. The bluffing is pretty bad in this game because there's no betting, but you still can do it. And it's very risky and would require someone um, to be playing a lot and know what they're doing um, and have a sophisticated mind about this game. And the bluffing in this would honestly, you know, it's kind of risky and it's more just for show to be like, oh, I bluffed you, um, you know, but anyway, let's show you along. So let's say this person has dealt negative five, negative 10, positive nine, positive seven. So this person's bluffing. They have negative five and positive nine. You really only, only want to do this if you have a four or three or negative four or negative three, you need some equity. You're not going to do it with like a negative 15 because the goal is still to beat the other person. This person has negative 10 and positive 7. So, and then let's say this card is negative 6. So they're going to say, okay, well, if I... Now, there's no rule. You, there's three turns in which you can draw cards, stand, or pick up from the pile, and then also discard. So there's no rule that says you can't stand, stand, draw, or stand, draw, stand, or stand, draw, draw. So what this person's going to do is they're going to go first, and they're going to stand. Now this person has a uh, negative three, which is, you know, it's not that good for 1v1 for heads up, but they're going to think, all right, I need to get a negative one or one or zero because chances are that's what this person has if they stood. They may even have a zero, in which case I'm really going to have to get a good hand. So they're going to be drawing um, and they're going to try and make a better hand. So let's say they draw and they get a 5. So now they're at negative 2. Um, and let's say this person stands again. So they're now they're thinking, all right, they probably have a 0 maybe, negative 1 or 1 definitely, but they probably have a 0. So now they're going to say my negative 2, because negative 10 plus 7 plus 5, 12 minus 10 is 2. So now they're going to think, well, I definitely need to get another card. So they're going to draw again, and now they get another negative 10. So now they're at positive 8, negative 10, plus seven is negative three, plus five is negative two, minus, uh, or 12 minus 10 is two, minus 10 is negative eight, sorry, negative eight. So they have negative eight. Um, so now they are like, darn it, I'm way off, now I gotta draw again. And <laughs> funnily enough, they get the positive eight, which gets them zero. So now they're like, all right, we're pretty tied. Uh, so this person, um, on their last turn, they may decide, all right, so it's time for me to make a move now and uh, decide to draw. Um, oh, so we'll just say, we'll go like that. So now we'll say this person draws and they're way off now. They're at 14, um, 9 plus 10, 19 minus 5 is 14. So their bluff kind of got ruined because what it was relying upon was this person drawing a lot and getting a really bad hand and then, then making a move at the last second and getting a negative two to two. Um, and that's what they were hoping for. So it's really risky. Um, it's mostly to rely on this person having a bad hand, just having like a decent hand to start with and then getting a bad hand in the end, um, which is unlikely to happen. And they're probably just trying to improve their hand or they'll probably end up getting a negative one, zero or one. So, I mean, it's kind of dumb, but as you can see what happens is they end up getting the zero. Uh, seven plus five is 12, plus eight is 20, minus 10 is 10, minus 10 is zero. So anyway, that's pretty much the buffing. Uh, very risky and not advisable or whatever. So.
Uh, lastly, this is just one more thing. Um, if you have, uh, like, let's say, any cards, negative 9 to 9, um, you have uh, three cards that will get you to negative 1 or 0 or 1. Um, for instance, let's say we have negative 9 here. Uh, let me just try and find it. I didn't bother. So now what we have is negative 9. An 8 will give us uh, negative 1. A 9 will give us 0. Uh, and a 10 will give us positive 1. So there's that to keep in mind, um, which is pretty helpful, uh, just to give you a basic idea. And uh, 3 of those cards um, times 3 is 9 divided by uh, 62. Um, I'm just going to do the math. And let's say you know three of the cards, so 59, so 9 divided by 59. So you'll have like a 15% chance or whatever of getting it, um, of getting to negative 1 or 1, uh, which isn't too bad, um, uh, just because you'll have multiple cards. So anyway, that just kind of gives you an idea. However, if you have the um, negative, so if you have 10, or higher, or negative 10 or higher, um, you're only going to have two cards that can get you to negative 1, 0, or 1, because with the 10, with positive 10, you can't get a negative 11, because that's not a card, it's only 1 through 10, and negative 1 through 10, and two zeros, so you're only going to have two options, so now you're going to have 2 times 3 is 6 instead of 9, divided by 59, we'll say. So now we have 10% chance. So that just kind of gives you an idea of the chances that you have statistically. Cool guys, and I think that's going to wrap it up. Um, anyway, let me try and do that thing. Uh, anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up for the video. Um, sorry if it kept you a little long. Uh, yeah, so anyway, um, uh, hope you enjoyed it. I thought I tried to put everything in there I could. I, I did make an original one, but it wasn't very good. Um, anyways, yeah, so, shuffle the correct way. Alright, alright, see you guys. Peace. Hey, turn it up. Bye-bye, I'm into me.